I'm going to crown what I believe to be my car of the year. And you know, being the world-renowned journalist that I am when it comes to cars and the authority that I have to hand out awards like this, I'm really excited because I feel like uh, people really care about my opinion. So a lot of journalists have different ways of kind of measuring what their car of the year is. I have very official methods that I'm using and I will share with, actually I won't share those with you because they're very secretive. I wanna make sure that I keep the integrity of my channel and my credibility and uh, I, can't, I can't unveil my secrets. So I'm just going to completely share with you the one car that really blew my mind. Is it one of my cars or is it not one of my cars? We'll find out, I guess. This guy behind me is taking a picture of my license plate, I think. But anyway, so top secret 2022 car of the year for my modifications is going to be unveiled in 30 seconds for you. My 2022 car of the year. On the other side of this camera sits my 2022 car of the year. You ready for it? Here we go. It's my Golf R. Wow, what a cool surprise that was, wasn't it? I'm just kidding, that's not it. Here it really is. basically knew me when I had a G35 and I was like, how do I turn this Recaro seat heater off? He was like, it's just like the one on the G35. And I was like, I, I don't remember, but yeah, there it is. Hiding nowhere near to be found here. It smells like sweet ethanol in here now. 28,000 miles on this thing.
all my cars just to buy this car. Oh, it is just a different level. It's a different level. I've never ever driven anything like this. Like, I've driven a Hellcat a long time ago, it was cool. But this is just the sounds, the clunking, the, the pure raw energy of this car. It's so good. It's so good. Uh oh, Altima. Altima. Is he gonna race? I hope he races me. I hope so. This is my car of the year because frankly, I haven't driven many cars. But also, uh, Rainer went from a uh, 2016 M4 manual, which I was absolutely in love with that car. Uh, and when he told me he was shifting over to a GTR, I wouldn't say I was underwhelmed, but I was like, okay, cool, automatic. You know, the car's been out for 10 years. More than that, I think. I don't even remember how long it's been. I think it's been like 12, 13 years. Hasn't changed much in the grand scheme of things. But if you're an owner of one of these cars, you really understand all the small things that they change and they constantly tweak. And this specific one obviously is very heavily modified. And even before he had done a few more things to it, this car was just an absolute blast to drive. What I love about this car, outside of the speed and then the grunt and everything like that, is the fact that he would bring his daughter to car meets. He has a back seat, a functional back seat. It's not gonna hold large adults very comfortably, but the back seat works for a guy with a kid or two kids, he has two kids. On top of that, you have all wheel drive traction. So it's actually pretty, probably pretty good in most driving conditions compared to front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. So it's not just this brawny power about this car that I love. I think it's the, it's everything. It's the fact that you can daily this thing if you want to. Now his smells like sweet, sweet ethanol or whatever it is. Uh, but you can daily this car. It's comfortable-ish. The Recaros are amazing. I, I love these Recaros. They're even way better than the ones that I have in my S4. And just overall, this car is, oh, it, it's, it checks so many boxes for me personally. Now, if this was a manual, Rainer and I talk a lot about this, is if this was a manual, would we take this in a manual? At the end of the day, there's this threshold, and there's, I'm sure there's many people that disagree, but there's this threshold you hit with power that basically negates the need for a manual. Because, sure, it's probably really fun to row through the gears of a six, 700 horsepower car, but I don't think it matches the, the fun that you get with an automatic, and that's sacrilegious for me to say. And I'm saying that without any experience of driving this in a manual mode because it doesn't exist. But I do think that there's something to be said with this much power and just hitting the paddles and the transmission shifting like this compared to you rowing your own gears. I'll probably get reamed for that. I don't know because I would never say things like that either. But now having driven this six, 700 horsepower GTR, I, I understand why people get automatics in these cars. This GTR is my car of the year from modifications. Take that for what it's worth, which probably not worth a lot, but you know what? I have fun doing this stuff. Gives me a reason to drive this car and puts the biggest grin on my face. I hope that it resonates through the video. And if it doesn't, find yourself a friend with a GTR, especially a tuned one, and go drive it. Because this is an unreal experience.
All right, so I'm here with Rainer, uh, one of my best friends, who is also the owner of, uh, you know what, just tell me the specs of that car. Specs of this car, let's see, it's a 2014 uh, GTR Black Edition, it's a 3.8 liter V6, uh, full bolt-on, E85, um, it's running anywhere between 650 to 700 wheel horsepower, uh, roughly the same in torque. So I would say that it's probably the most fun car I've owned to date. Thinking about the past cars I've owned, I've owned several BMWs. Uh, I've had um, an M Roadster 335, E92 M3, and an F80 M3. Yeah, I was going to ask because a lot of people think that if you have a GTR, you come from like a really heavy JDM background. Mm -hmm. And obviously you just kind of listed off your recent cars yeah. and not a lot of JDM in there. What was the last JDM car you owned? The last JDM car I owned was a 1989 Honda Prelude. <laughs> and what year was this? Uh, I had this car from 1993 until 1998. Yeah. Rainer's only 24 years old though, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> and I know you're a fairly big enthusiast of manual transmissions, but overall, what do you think? You know, are you happy with the transmission? Do you wish it had a manual? What's your um, thoughts? Very happy with the transmission. I, could, I couldn't imagine having a manual in this car. Um, I think manual transmissions are great. I'm very much an advocate of manual transmissions. I do truly believe that uh, a manual transmission has its place at a certain horsepower range. Um, I think approaching anything over 550, 600 wheel horsepower, it doesn't seem like a good mate to a manual transmission in the terms that you're not utilizing all the power, where pretty much at that power level to really put down all that power and utilize the power, you need a dual clutch transmission. Yep. And I can honestly say, I mentioned this earlier too, is I wouldn't have agreed until I drove this car. I know this is fairly modified. It's got exhaust and stuff like that. What's Short term, what's next for you? Well, what did you just recently get done? Uh, I actually just had it retuned. Uh, originally had the Cobb tune on it, decided to switch to Accutech. Um, I had Rob Baker uh, do a custom tune on it, just to kind of dial it in a little bit better. Um, and I think just making that switch from Cobb to Accutech and Rob Baker custom tuning it, um, I th probably picked up an additional 50, 60 wheel horsepower than yeah. what I was running before. I would say the next immediate modification, uh, at least in my plan for 2023, is turbo upgrades, doing hybrid turbos. It, uh, it'll at least take me to about 850 wheel horsepower range. So over <laughs> and is that the limit range. of the transmission? It is the limit of the transmission and the limit of the rods. But I think that's going to be it for me in terms of uh, modifications on this car is about 850 wheel horsepower. Oof. Yep. I can't even imagine what this feels like with that much more power. But, well, thanks, Rainer. Thanks for letting me make your car my, my, <laughs> my prestigious Car of the Year award of, um, of the seven cars I've driven this year, including my mom's uh, RDX. Uh, this definitely stood out. Yeah, so Rainer gives me free reign to drive this thing because him and I have a very long history of car relationships. So Anytime. Yep. In any future car, you're more than welcome to it. This is the last question. What... What's the next car? Like, I mean, I guess if you could replace this car right now, what would it be with? If I could replace this car right now, I would probably get a 2017 plus Audi R8 and immediately slap twin turbos on it. That is probably looking to be my goal in the next uh, year and a half, two years. And then what's your non-hyper car, affordable, relatively affordable dream car? Um, you can't say like a $1.2 million car. <laughs> I would never say that. I'm, I'll never be that guy. Something that you think that. you'll own at some point. I would say probably McLaren 600 LT. I would probably say in between an Audi R8 and, and that. Um, Porsche GT3. Yep, there's, there there's it is. There's no doubt I'll own one of those. Uh, thanks for letting me drive and feature your car. Yep. Have a good one. Thank you for ruining my car of the year video. <laughs>